What's up guys, Will here from Team Hunt Stand, and today I wanna to show y'all some tips and tricks for the settings I like to have on my cellular cameras like this one here to have on a feeding or baiting station. And then the other option, other thing I wanna show y'all is how to mount a camera like this instead of strapping your straps around like this a million different times. Hunting Made Easy has a nice mounting option for that. And then I also wanna show y'all another option that HME has, a solar panel pack that you can plug into just about any cellular, any game camera out there. So if you've got an area that you wanna let soak, you don't wanna have to go in and out to change batteries and grab an SD cards, and you really don't wanna go into that area until you hunt, they have a nice affordable 12 volt solar panel power pack that you can hook up to this. Leave the area alone until it's ready to hunt. All right. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, get the million miles of straps off this camera. Make sure my camera's off so it doesn't take a million pictures while I'm here. Take that camera off. Now the camera I've got here is a Stealth Cam DS4K. It takes really high quality pictures. We've already been getting quite a few pictures of deer in this area. We've got a lot of does. I don't want to come in here at all. We just saw a really nice big velvet buck show up the other morning. So we know he's in this area and we just, we want to stay out of here. We don't want to touch it. So I want to make this happen. And that's where HME came in clutch with some solid options to make that happen for us. So next thing I'm gonna do, take these batteries out. You don't have to have batteries in here with the solar pack hooked up because this does have a 12 volt battery inside, like your standard typical 12 volt uh, deer feeder battery, what I've called it. Grew up in Texas, so that's what I know it as. Stick that battery panel back in there. And then for what we have here, just your standard T-post, HME has a nice T-post hanger for that that mounts on this really simple. So simple, super easy. You can see the grooves. You've got notches on most t-posts out there so you can just come in set it to the preferred height that you want i usually like to go about knee height keeping it at the deer's level i'm not too worried about much of anything bothering this camera since i do have it inside a feed pen so i'm not too concerned about cattle uh pigs if a pig gets in here pigs are flying then at that point so you can see here you've got some different options different angles that you can set it at you just screw it down into the mounting hole on the bottom of the camera. So I like to keep it out here like this to first get it mounted. You've got your mounting hole here on your camera. Be careful not to cross thread it. And just carefully start screwing it on. And you'll know when to stop because the camera will stop. So you don't want to go past much, much past this point because this is pretty tight now. So what I'll actually do is back it out because you do have uh, two washers here. You got a metal and rubber washer that you can tighten it up against to keep it snug so that camera won't move on its threads. And then I'll just adjust it to the angle we need it at there. I'll come here behind it. Might loosen up just a smidge just so I'm catching both the gravity feed and the corn feeder here. Things to consider and remember when you're getting a camera mounted, HME does have mounts that do screw into trees, but like I said, we've got a T-post here, but the thing that you want to consider is which way this camera is pointing. You want to make sure you have it pointing north to south directions because if you have it pointed in the east or you pointed having the west you're going to deal with a lot of sun flare or glare in the mornings or evenings from the sun pictures aren't going to be good so you could have a really nice buck that walks right in front of that camera but you can't tell what it is because of the sun flare so we have this camera pointed to the north so we've already had some really good transmission from this camera so we know we don't need to change the angle much so it's good where it is we don't have a lot of brush here that's gonna get in the way. This grass, if it starts getting any taller, I may have to come in here and chop it down just so it doesn't get any false triggers or trigger this camera to go off. But you wanna make sure you don't have any tall grass, trees, limbs in the way that would cause you to have false triggers and eat up battery life, eat up memory really quick on your cameras. Just a couple things to take note on. With that being said, get this solar panel just underneath. And the nice thing about these is you can pivot them, these, uh, these uh, solar packs, you can pivot them depending on what angle you get the sun from. So we've got a lot of good sun coming up from the east in the morning. So I'm gonna have it facing that way. I could face it west, but we've got some trees over here back behind that could cause to have a little bit of shade. So I wanna get as much sun to make sure that this battery stays nice and charged early in the morning. And then you've got a nice metal sleeved cord here should have enough to 
play with there. So that way, if you got varmints, coons, they shouldn't be able to chew through this, but that way it's more durable and you can't have critters and varmints come up and mess this power pack up. So I'll just kind of, I like to stuff that cord kind of between the box and the T-post so it stays sandwiched, stays sandwiched in there. So that way, don't have to worry too much about it. And then just come in here, got it plugged in, power switch on, and we got power. We got three green lights. Close her up. All right, so finally, once you've got everything hooked up, you've got the solar power pack from HME hooked up to your camera. Make sure everything's tight. Make sure all your fittings are good. You got everything pushed in. Make sure you've got your camera pointed where you want it. Have it at a good angle. And then the last thing I want to talk to y'all about are the different settings that you can have on a, on a baiting station or feeding site like this. Yes, you want to have the instant trigger speed, but the thing that you want to watch out for are your burst intervals and your delays or your PIR delays. So what I like to do when I have it set up on a station like this, these deer come in and they're here for 30 minutes, hour. They're here all night. They're here for a long time. And so I don't need to have this thing set up where it's taking a photo every 15, 20, 30 seconds, doing two to three burst intervals like you might on a trail or on a mock scrape or on a rub somewhere because you wanna try and get as many photos as you can as at one time when that buck comes in. It's different on this. I'm taking inventory. So what I, what I like to do, the settings I like to have for this camera in this situation, I'll go into my settings on the Command Pro app and I usually like to have one to two different upload times a day. I don't wanna have instant uploads because my camera's just gonna be going off all day. If I had it set up on a trail somewhere, I might, so that way as soon as something comes by and it triggers it, I get that message. But what I'm doing on this, I'm gonna set this up for a one photo burst every minute. So if I've got a deer here or a few deer here for a while, it's gonna trigger every minute after it takes that photo. So instead of taking a bunch, filling up my card, and if, I, if you don't have a camera set up on a solar panel pack like this, it's gonna eat away at your battery quick. So I like to have that, keeps it nice and simple for checking images at night, at night whenever I get that, that transmission from the Command Pro app. So I, I have it set up to send me notification and all the pictures to me nine o'clock every night. So that way before bed, I'm scrolling through, seeing everything that came through in the morning, checking everything in the evening, but it's nice to have that on that one photo burst every minute. So if you're looking for options out there right now on what you need so you don't have to go into hunting areas, gonna highly recommend high quality camera like the Stealth Cam DS4K like I've got here. Pair it with your HME solar power panel pack. You're not gonna have to touch that area until it's time to go in and hunt. So get yourself a setup like this paired with the settings that I like to use on my cameras. And you're gonna find yourself being able to make a game plan that much easier when it comes time to put together all the pieces to chase after that buck this fall. If you enjoy all the content we've been pushing out on the HuntStand channel, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification button so you get notified for all the content we push out like this. We're gonna be pushing out a lot of tips and tactics videos like this over the fall, so make sure you're subscribed. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one.